Okay, so we just looked at business risk, and remember, business risk leads on to the risk of material misstatement, and that's what we're looking at here now, the risk of material misstatement. Now, there's a nice little way through a risk of material misstatement question. First thing is, calculate the M in the MM, so it's called material misstatement for a reason. Everything has to be material, so calculate the materiality first when given some numbers to do so. Okay, it's not all, you're not always given numbers to do that, but if you are, just calculate the materiality and say yes, so this makes it material, and so it's a material misstatement potentially. Then it's a material misstatement because presumably um, you're worried about the FR not being done correctly. So just a brief description of the FR of the financial reporting issue and keep it brief. It's not an FR exam. There's no marks for stating which IFRS it is, just like there's no marks for stating which ISA it comes under. After we've done that then, because that's all knowledge work, we now need to get to professional level. We need to now apply that to the scenario and finally say, right, so... All, if this is done incorrectly, this would be the impact on the accounts. As always, this is best explained by doing an example, and we're going to carry on the example that we did before. So if you remember, uh, we had uh, payment of 30% in advance. Whenever you see that, that's a revenue recognition problem. Okay, now we're not saying that they're definitely going to treat it wrongly. We're saying there's a risk that they may treat it incorrectly. So what is the risk then? Well, you just state, you know, you talk about this 30% in advance and you state the risk is that we recognise it too early. Um, but you have to explain the FR. So you say, right, well, the FR is what you should do. You recognise revenue as the obligation goes down. OK, as the obligation in the contract goes down in the contractual terms, and that will be as control is passed. Now, um, in the scenario, then that will be when the machine is delivered to the customer. So therefore, we are worried that the 30 percent goes to revenue incorrectly straight away, whereas what it should do instead is go to deferred income. And now we're on this fourth point. So think about what I've done. Uh, I couldn't calculate that because there was no numbers. I gave a brief description of the FR. I used the scenario. Finally, I want to state the impact on the accounts. So you say, look, if they did do it incorrectly then, revenue would be overstated, okay, uh, because it's been recognised earlier, isn't it? And liabilities, because that it should have gone to deferred income, so liabilities would be understated. And that's how you do it. Let's carry on and do one more for you. If you remember, it talked about it being bespoke machinery, etc. So you could say, right, as it's bespoke, we were worried that, um, that they might cancel the order. So if they did cancel the order, that would be a problem with our inventory. Because you would say, right, it takes, I think it was three months uh, to manufacture it. So therefore, we're going to have items in work in progress. Work in progress, now brief description of the FR, should be measured at the lower of cost and net realisable value. Okay. Now, if the customer cancels, then we're going to be worried about the net realisable value, because the net realisable value will therefore be lower. Why? Because it's bespoke. And as it's bespoke to the customer, others might not want it being so bespoke to the other customer. And so they won't be wanting to pay for it as much, and so the NRV will possibly be lower than cost. OK, and then you say, right, so that would result in overstating inventory, OK, and overstating profits. That's what you do. Obviously, you write it out in full sentences, but that's basically how we do it. Finally, then we'll go on and have a look at audit risk as a whole in the next video.